Now let's look at finding the equation of a logarithmic function that fits a set of data. So we've looked at examples like this with linear and quadratic and exponential functions, where we have a set of data and then we compute the equation that will best fit that data with the given model, linear, quadratic, or exponential. We're going to do the same thing now with a logarithmic model. The important thing to note at the beginning is when do we want to use this? Remember that regression is the term that we use for fitting data to a model. So logarithmic regression is a math model using a logarithmic equation. The types of situations where we want to model this are when the growth of the function goes up rapidly at first and slows over time. The graph is very steep at the beginning and gets less steep as time goes on. So like an exponential equation, it's always getting bigger and bigger, but the amount that it's getting by is less and less over time, as opposed to an exponential where the amount that it's giving by gets bigger over time. The model that we want to come up with, the function is going to look like y equals a plus b ln of x. So we're always going to be using the natural logarithm as the base for our logarithmic model, and we have a and b as parameters. In order to find this equation, we're going to be using the LNREG, natural logarithmic regression function, on our graphing calculator. Let's go ahead and look at an example of how to do this. Example 5. Due to the advances in medicine and higher standards of living, life expectancy has been increasing in most developed countries since the beginning of the 20th century. The table below shows the average life expectancy in years of Americans from the years 1900 to 2010. So we have the year and we have the life expectancy. Let's see if we can get a handle on this data. One of the things that I can notice is that the data that's given to me here, the years are always increasing by 10 from one year to the next. So let's look at the difference in the life expectancies. First one is 2.7, then 4.1, then 5.6. It's hard to see a direct pattern as we go, but one of the things I can notice is that I seem to have bigger numbers in front where the life expectancy has big gains. And then towards the end, the gains seem to say smaller. So this is maybe one hint that we might have a logarithmic model, where we have big increases at the beginning and smaller increases later on. One thing that might help is looking at a scatter plot of the data. So I'm going to go ahead and get out my calculator, input the data, and look at a scatter plot to see what the data looks like graphically. Remember to enter a scatter plot on our calculator. We're going to press the Staff button, press Edit and enter our data with the x values in L1 and the output or y values in L2. Now that I've entered all of the data, in order to create a scatter plot on my calculator, if I hit second and hit y equals, I can see that above that is stat plots. So that brings up the different stat plots. And on number one, I hit enter. I'm going to make sure that it's turned on, and under type, I'm going to select the one that looks like a scatter plot, which is the first one. I entered my x list as L1, so no change is needed, y list is L2, so no change is needed, and I don't care about the marks and colors, so I'm ready to just hit graph. And I notice that I don't see my scatter plot, but I might see other stuff on here. If you see other equations, that might be left over from drawing some other equation earlier, or, or if I hit graph and I get an error, hit go to. And what might happen is under one of your graphs, you might have just some gibberish that you need to clear out. So now I hit graph and I get absolutely nothing. Remember, in order to see our data, we want to adjust the zoom window. So I hit zoom and go down to number nine, zoom stat, and I should see the scatter plot of my data. Looking at this, this might look somewhat linear, but I notice that it has a little bit of a bend in it. It seems like as I move up, the y values seem to get less and less steep as we go. So perhaps a logarithmic model would be a better fit than a linear one. So I can see that the rate of change is not constant, so it's probably not a linear model. There's no turnaround point, so I don't want to use a quadratic. And it appears that the increases are going down instead of up. So it looks like logarithmic will be a better fit than exponential. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we would go about creating a logarithmic model of this data. One of the things that we're going to do here that is a little bit of a pain since we've already entered all of the years as x values, we're going to change all of the x values 
so that x equals 1 corresponds to the year 1900, and x equals 2 corresponds to the year 1910, and so on. Each decade increase will just be an increase of 1. And this is something that we've done earlier in our modeling to have more manageable numbers. Notice that I'm not going to start at 0 because we can't use 0 as an input value in the logarithmic function. Remember that at an x value of 0, the graph never actually reaches that. So we can't use that as a data point. So I'm going to go back to my calculator and look at the data that I entered. And I'm going to change all of the years to go starting at 1, increasing by 1 each time from 1 to 12. So if I look at my scatter plot again, it's going to look exactly the same. I've just adjusted what my x's are. In order to find the equation of my logarithmic regression model, we're going to hit stat, go over to calculate, and use option 9 linear regression. So on my calculator, I press stat, go over to the calculate menu, and go down to number 9, logarithmic regression. My, da my x data is in L1, my y data is in L2, and we can just go down and hit calculate. And that gives us the equation, y equals a plus b times natural log of x, where it gives us the numbers for a and b. So let's go ahead and write that down. So using three decimal places, we'll get y equals 42.527 plus 13.858, when I round, times natural log of x. On my calculator, if I enter that as a y equals equation, 42.527 plus 13.858 times natural log of x, and I press the graph button, it will draw the logarithmic model that I created through my scatter plot. And I can see that that's a pretty good fit. Now let's use the model to predict the average American life expectancy for the year 2030. The first thing I need to do in order to answer this question is to figure out what x value is 2030. Remember that 1900 was an x value of 1. 2010 was an x value of 12. So 2020 would be an x value of 13, and 2030 would be an x value of 14. So in my model, y equals 42.527 plus 13.858 times the natural log of 14. And when we type that in on our calculator, it will give us 79.099. Rounding to one decimal place, we'll get 79.1. The units are years. Now, this is what our model predicts based on past history. If life going forward continues as life as has been in the past, this might be a good model. However, if there are changes to life expectancy based on things that have happened or will happen, then that might make our model inaccurate. For example, if we look at things that might influence our model, look at the years 2020 and 2021, life expectancy could decrease due to things like pandemics, climate change, pollution, deteriorating work conditions, etc. Conversely, life expectancy could increase due to things like unanticipated medical advances, improving health care, and things like that. Either of those could impact life expectancy in a way that our model does not predict and render our model inaccurate. 